Well, it's disgraceful and indeed very concerning incident. I can, I'm glad to report that the two Garda members in the vehicle were uninjured uh, and then were able to summon assistance, which quickly arrived to help them to restore order uh, in, the, uh, in the Cherrywood area. There's been uh, vigorous policing operations in that area over the last number of weeks. Uh, we've seized vehicles uh, and, and arrests have been made and people have been brought before the courts. So there's been a lot of enforcement work. There's a full investigation now underway, but also then we have to look to tonight and the subsequent nights as well. Here in Shiro to discuss this are People Before Profit Councillor for Bally Firm at Drimna, Hazel de Nortu, Minister of State at the Department of Agriculture, Martin Hayden, Sinn Féin TD for Sligo Leitrim, Martin Kenny, Special Correspondent for the Irish Examiner, Mick Clifford, and Crime and Security Correspondent for the Sunday Times, John Mooney. And John, I'll come to you first of all, because as we were discussing off air, although this has been very high profile and that footage has been shared very widely in the last 24 hours, this is not a unique occurrence in Dublin or elsewhere. It isn't really, and I think it's really important to put this in context, that joyriding has been a problem in most urban areas across Ireland for the past 30 years. Um, and these type of incidents, um, they happen and they occur. Some incidents you have, um, you know, guard patrols being rammed and attacked like this or rocks or whatever thrown at them. So not only is joyriding not unusual, rammings like this are also it, relatively commonplace. It does commonplace. happen. I'm not saying it happens every night of the week, but it does happen. And certainly joy, joy, joyriding is an issue. So in that particular area, and it, I'm always very cautious about labelling an area as having a particular type of problem. But some of, there has been quite a substantial amount of guard operations in that area to deal with this problem. Indeed, Drew Harris, as Drew Harris said there, there are people before the courts on this. Um, so it's a problem there. But, but it, just to talk you through what's likely to happen with this, these people have already been identified. The doors are going to be put in the next 48 hours and they'll be arrested in charge and possibly, you know, held on bail, etc. But this is more reflective of a much more significant problem of uh, teenagers and young people getting involved in all different types of violent or uh, crime. And this is just the outworkings for this. I think what people they get really shocked when they see this, and it's caught on camera and it's circulated and it's just so out of the norms um, to what they normally experience in their own in their own daily lives. But I mean, a couple of months ago, I was driving out to Holtz and I came across a car completely overturned in the middle of the road. Um, myself and another motorist had to see whether there was someone in it. And it was joyriders again had taken this car, overturned it and ran off. So this this is a problem. It, it, it happens. I think we've just got to be careful that we don't blow it out of all proportion. Um, you know, there's no real parts of Dublin that the guards can't go into. Okay. That, that was a particular nasty incident. The guards involved handled it perfectly. They didn't overreact. They didn't... Um, they're okay. very mindful of people uh, being injured and stuff like all right. that. Um, all of that being said, um, Hazel Norton, you're a representative uh, for that area. Um, but if I'm a is part of, part of that whole area. There is a community here who are genuinely being terrorised by this kind of behaviour on a regular basis. Yeah, and I think we need to start off by saying we have condemned it as public reps in the area and the community have openly come out today and condemned it as well. Um, this has been happening for a long time now. We've seen a peak in it this time last year and it's actually that time that as a part, across party we met with senior managements within DCC. At that particular time, there was an incident where one of the councillors from Sinn Féin were attacked and um, we raised... He's specifically his, targeted in that instance? He was up uh, witnessing what was happening. It wasn't at this um, piece where it was last night, but it was down the road and um, they were targeted in outside homes, new homes that had been built and the, when they were rallying the cars per se, they were down abandoning the car outside of this particular home where the bollards were and burning it and residents had been on and saying that uh, that they couldn't take it anymore. It was intimidation. There is a high level of intimidation there. We can't deny that fact. Um, and we have been raising this and we've been saying for some time we could see this happening. Unfortunately, we they, like I know there's talk about this is a um, decades long issue. I mm. mean, it's not the first time it's happened. Um, and there has been videos of Snapchats and stuff being shared for a very long time now. And um, we only had the Minister for Children out, Roderick O'Gorman, there on Thursday and he was uh, brought back up. He was a visit Monday Youth Services and he was brought up to this particular area. And he was shown the evidence, which had a day before, at three or four in the day, there had been a, a car we're presuming was robbed. So know. if this is now has, has drawn more attention to this, but this is actually more widespread than a lot of people might realise, mm -hmm. is there a chance that this might actually be the prompt that, that results in a long-term fix or might it just be 
more people looking at your community, looking down on it, and then things could get even worse? Well, this is going to probably have both effects, unfortunately. Um, but I think we have worked with the organisations and we have put proposals forward to say how we should tackle this. And evidence-based within the area has said, if we do outreach work, we go out and work with these particular individuals, ask what exactly is going on, how we can integrate them into the community. I mean, it's, um, it's a piece that takes a particular type of approach let's say, and we're looking to kind of support the services in doing that because when it does come down to a Garda resource issue, it then has already become, become a criminal issue. And what are we going to do then? We can't keep kind of pushing people into that way. We should be trying to get to it before it gets to that level. You say Garda resource issue, but yours is a community which, for better or worse, is, is known as having issues of this sort. And as you say, this is, is relatively commonplace. One would think that your community has already gotten maybe a disproportionate level of resources to try and deal with this problem and it's not getting any better. So what would more resources do differently to those you already have? Yeah, and, I, and that is the perception. Um, but I suppose there's services there. We have got many services. It's, it's the resourcing of those services. So those services are fighting for every penny that they have. And they were never really restored to the fully, full budget that they have. And they will tell you themselves, if you're out there, like with the Equine Centre, the Orchard Centre, we have um, the St. Dalton's. Like there's really good services out there. There's Garda Youth Diversion Programmes, Family Base. Mm. And they will tell you from evidence-based that they need more outreach workers. It's the outreach piece that it seems to be the that will work, that has benefited and that they can explain and show the results. Uh, Mick Clifford, how do we get to a situation where this ends up being perceived locally as an us versus them, that it's it's certain cohorts of locals versus the Guardian, that they don't see each other as being part of the same community? Alienation. I mean, you know, it is urban deprivation. There is no question mm. in the world about that. And, peop and, and the, the depth of alienation. And it's in a small minority, I, I'd suggest, of families uh, w within the community. And as Hazel pointed out, you know, particularly there, there are some very good services there in a general sense with the equine centre and places like that. But you have individual families and you can even go back to the years of austerity when the likes of the community development projects were all dismantled and that sort of thing. And that now even people from those families that really need, and I know this is an overused word, but that word trauma, there's stuff that's gone down there through generations. There are some people, and I'm not specific about this community, but mm. in areas like that in cities around the state. That, that is the scenario. Is that making excuses, though, for illegality? Mm. I don't believe so. I, I, I genuinely don't. Ill illegality happened. It should be prosecuted. The full force of the law should be used there. It's a question of what do you want to do in terms of ensuring that this doesn't happen again and that state resources are not having to be put into, for example, putting people in prison rather than trying to ensure that kids don't get to the stage where, they, where they, their attitude to the Gardaí is as violent as that was last night. Uh, Martin Kenny, you're Sinn Féin yeah. spokesperson on justice. Do you think Gardaí are appropriately resourced to deal with issues like this? Uh, look, there's, there's always issues of resources. I mean, Ballyferma Garda Station is a part-time Garda Station at the moment, and I think there's only one patrol car for the area, and that's part of the issue. Um, but a major part of it is... Sorry, there's only one patrol car? Only one patrol area, car in the area, yeah. Which is probably the one which that Which is probably the, the one that was there. Like, I'm not sure if it was or not. Which is why the public order units are being sent in the same Exactly, way. exactly. Now, and that, that's not to say, you know, that it's, it's, it's going to be a heavy-handed policing approach that's going to deal with this. It's not. It's a community approach that will have to deal with it. But when you have a specific incident like this where you have, you know, the most outrageous of behaviour and, you know, we, I think we all feel for the Gardaí that were involved, who were attacked. We feel for the danger of the public, all the people who were eyewitnesses that was watching this going on. Their lives and, and, and safety was in danger as well. And, you but know... That might have been the case, but many of them seem to take a lot of joy from what they Well, that's, that's one of the problems. You know, I, like, I, I've got letters here from, from residents out there who are worried about their children that their children are watching this going on? Are they going to be taken with all this excitement? You know, there's families out there who, and, and the vast, vast majority of them in, in all of these areas are decent people that want the best for their children, want the best for their community. They see this going on. They're afraid their children will get tied up in it. And, you know, it, it, is, it is a difficult time for them. And we do need to put resources in. We do need to have better youth services in place for them. We do need to, put, to get the investment into the communities. And we do need community guardy as well that are trusted and work with the community because that's one of the big things that we have absent in a lot of these communities. Are they going to get those, Martin Hayden? Because we've seen today the GRA says that this is indicative of the need to increase resources for the force. They say that they've been beating a drum for years and years and they're not listened to. And this is a manifestation of everything they've been trying to highlight for a long time. Well, first of all, I have to say, look, what happened and the footage you've seen is completely unacceptable and is utterly disrespectful to the rule of law um, and also to law-abiding communities in which this is happening who unfortunately now get branded. Um, because we're having discussions like this, whole areas and really good communities where there's an awful lot of good community work happening uh, gets branded in that way. 
you know, Ballyferm at Clondalkin, as, as Hazel will know, is, is part of the, uh, the West Division of the Dublin Met- Metropolitan Region. I think um, it's been about 11% increase in Guardian numbers since 2017. Um, it's, it stands about 750 or thereabouts now at the end of, uh, of August for, for that region. Um, and, and I have to agree with what's been said here on the panel that, yes, we absolutely need to see the full rigours of the law be brought against the perpetrators here. This is unacceptable behaviour and can never be tolerated. But the solution to this on a broader basis in terms of supporting communities, uh, either in Ballyfermic and Dawkins or in many of our regional towns that have challenges in, in certain areas and pockets as well, is, is it a multi-agency response? It, the Guardian alone cannot solve this. And that's where we're looking at trial and projects, you know, like the increased investment we had in our youth diversion services, an extra 7 million euro in last year's budget uh, across the 106 uh, youth diversion projects um, with uh, Minister McEntee's uh, youth um, justice strategy okay. for 21 to 27. It is an area there where right. we're all now changes. I want to get Hazel's view in a moment and whether you think that's adequate for your area. But first of all, I just want to come back to you, John Mooney, because sometimes you hear from, from Gardaí on the beat that they feel like maybe there's a disconnect between what they're seeing and the view of the Garda Commissioner because Drew Harris is focused on the big picture, on broader societal trends, and he's not looking at the micromanagement of individual situations, which is why you have stations like that local one that only had one patrol car and this evening have none. Well... I think when you're thinking about these issues, you've got to think about it, that it's not a Garda issue, it's a societal problem. And the real issue with dealing with crime like this or juvenile crime or social uh, uh, disorder and how it manifests itself in communities is that the response that's required is so unpalatable to the general public, to politicians and everything else, that it never gets dealt with. Kids that are getting involved in drug dealing, antisocial behaviour, serious crime and violence, there's lots of stuff going on in their lives and they need a different type of outreach work that is not really, and should never be led by the police. It should be led by people that have a particular skill set that understand what's going on with them. And kids so, so guards to, are being sent in to do the work that other counsellors well, the guards are... Res, you see, gar, g- guards respond to issues as after they are happening, not before them. They, they, I mean, the guards aren't going out. Re, they, they do some preventative crime work, but primarily they respond to emergency situations. Um, so the, the type of uh, sort of a re- response that's required to this stuff, it's widely known. It's not, you talk to any criminologist, anthropologist or whoever, they'll tell you what's required with this stuff. But to do that requires such a vast shift in procedures and policies that it just doesn't get any sort of political traction and therefore we went, we go around in this circular uh, argument. Is, is that a lot of our issue then, Hazel, that you have a situation where there are more and more policing resources but you're actually not dealing with the root causes and there's a lot of, of cure but no prevention? Yeah, and John has actually made a very good point there and, and that's what we're seeing. You know, I grew up in Cherry Orchard and from it I, I grew up witnessing this and that was our daily life. And I think it's a case of you want to break the back of it. And today we had kids going into the school because this happened outside of a primary school and had to witness the cars being removed and Dublin City Council being out and marks on the road and stuff. And people, genuine people from Cherry Orchard and are just trying to rear their kids, go to work, do a daily life, you know, like ourselves, like everybody that wants to get on in society. And constantly having to live and relive in this cycle. We need funding that's available. Like, even when the minister is out, he said the target that that's needed is a very bespoke approach because it's not the same for every area. It is a particular area that obviously, as you've said, has this recurrence over and over again. And is there a danger to... then for, for a community like yours? I don't want to talk up the idea that this might be inevitable, but the public order unit have been stood up there for the, this evening and we've already been talking about how this is more commonplace than the videos mm-hmm. might let on. Is there a danger that the community ends up even feeling more marginalised because you can't just be policed by rank and file members in a standard Garda car, that you need to have the public order unit on yeah, the we've, we've had that, we'll have that for Halloween, we'll have that for every Halloween, you know, be, and it's it, unfortunately, I mean, when you see, um, you know, Garda and riot police or whatever are standing back ready to kind of come in, and it's not the first time, and I hope to say it's the last time, but maybe it won't be if we do not get that annual fund and that people can put in place. It's not going to be fixed today, it's not going to be fixed tomorrow, it needs a long-term approach, and that's the problem. 